the What True Next podcast helps you build a TBR of future favorite books. In each episode, Lori and Maine interviews authors and book influencers to recommend books they loved for you to pick up today. If you're an avid reader, always looking for your next free read, then the show is Hi, Christina. Welcome to What True Next podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. So happy to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm Christina, and I write romance stories for both teens and adults, um, and my upcoming novel, The Neighbor Favor, publishes on February 28th. That is actually my adult romance debut, um, and it's about Lily, who is an aspiring children's books editor who is corresponding online with Nick, uh, who is an obscure fantasy author who uses a pen name, so she doesn't know that his name is Nick. Um, and they sort of fall for each other online before he sort of inexplicably ghosts her. But then they find out eventually that they are actually neighbors. So it's so good. <laughs> I actually, when I started reading the book, I was, human, I was like, I'm in a fantasy romance era. So when I started reading the book, I was like, wait, she's reading this fantasy book. I went, I was like, I Google, I went to Goodreads. I was like, is this book real? And then I would come to find out like, no, it's not real. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. Some of them are, some of the books are real that they mentioned. Yeah. And some, but the, but the, some of the, them the are. Original, the original, the Nick's book, I was like, it's a oh. real book. Because <laughs> no. I wanted to read it, I was like, I didn't get the, I didn't get to the part. I was like, oh, he's obscure, he's this, and I was like, oh, it's the book about him. Because I go, I don't go <laughs> reading the synopsis, so I had no idea. And I went to, I was like, this sounds so good, Black Elves. Like it sounded like such a fun premise. That That's, I, I'm glad you said that because I tried to make it feel real. Like I wanted people to walk away and be like, I wish next book was actual so I could read it um so I'm glad to hear that <laughs> yeah I went to good reads and I was sadly disappointed so <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> yeah so you start with you start getting published for teen romances you have a couple of them out there um what was the plan are you already you started writing YA or you were writing adult or like how do you how what was your writing journey look like for you yeah, um, I started with YA. I got my, well, I went to grad school um, to get an MFA in creative writing, and my concentration was in writing for children. Um, and I was young when I went off to grad school. I was 21. It was like right after undergrad. Um, and so at that point, I was, most of what I read was still YA. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was writing, working on like a lot of different YA stories and mostly reading YA. Um, but I always really, loved romance novels too particularly historical romance mm -hmm. um I was reading a lot of that in my early 20s and I knew that uh while I was starting with YA I did eventually also want to write adult romance because I think something that is so special about the adult romance category is that your readers grow with you mm -hmm. instead of outgrowing you. <laughs> yeah. Um you know and I just think about like authors that I discovered in my early 20s, like Beverly Johnson and I uh, thought Beverly Jenkins and um, Lisa Claypus. And like they had, by that point, they had already like 30 books in their catalog and they had been publishing for decades, but I had just discovered them and I could keep going with like whatever new books they had coming out. And I think that that's just like so special. Mm -hmm. And um, I also wanted to be able to create worlds and casts of characters and series and things like that. Um, and so I did always have in the back of my mind that I would branch out into adult at some point, um, but I wanted to establish myself in the YA space first. Um, so yeah, that was sort of the plan. <laughs> and now you're here. Now you're you get not only your teen or your audience who may who may be like, okay, I'm gonna try your adult books, but you have like a new audience who's like, hey, we did not know. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm discovering. I'm like, I feel like with the neighbor favor, there are a lot of new to me or people who are new to me that have started yeah. following me and then they've been finding out about the life, so, which is cool. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Do you have like an EO? Because I, I um, writing a historical romance, like it's something that you're like, you know, I love that genre, but I wouldn't write it or will you? No. 
<laughs> I would not. I hate research. I hate doing research. <laughs> um, and so I'm always so blown away by like the historical facts that are included yeah. in historical romances. For me, that's always going to be like a point of like fun and pleasure. They're like my, you know what I mean? Like my yeah. comfort reads and I don't want to try to mimic what they do. I just want that to be what I read. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of historical romance, what is your favorite time period? Like, which ones do you gravitate? You're like, oh my gosh, Ooh. I can keep going back to, you know. You know, I don't, I think a lot of what I've read is Regency. Yeah. But I don't necessarily have a favorite. I'm kind of just yeah. all over the place, really, like with Beverly Jenkins, her Old West series. Yeah. I love that. And I also love um, Alyssa Cole's um the uh, civil, civil war one the story yes yeah, yeah those yeah. I love those too um that's one of my favorite series so it's and also um I've read a few books by Jude Devereaux yeah that take place in different I, I really to me it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. it just feels like if it's a different era than the one that we're living in now it yeah. feels cool and interesting yeah I personally love Gilded Age because it's like it's kind of like a reminder of where we are like it's like a hundred years ago and a lot has changed but a lot has not changed at all you know yeah Yeah. I read a couple Joanna Shoup novels and I feel like she writes in the Gilded Age yeah yeah so it's like it's funny I'm like you know I'm a turner of the century I can imagine a hundred years from now you know historical romance writers writing about the 90s and 2000s you know? I know my god <laughs> it's, it's like imagine that it was like there was an old time where there were low-rise jeans and people were doing something <laughs> like social media <laughs> I know having to like write about I mean at this point Facebook feels older but like then yeah. it's like it started with my face and then you know yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so what can we expect in the future for you like do we expect more adult romances or some some more YA or a combination so yeah um next year well these are this is all of things go to plan yeah. <laughs> um my next adult romance will be from the point of view of Lily's older sister Violet so that'll be a story about her um I don't think that I can like talk about the plot or anything of it yet but that is supposed to pub next year um and I'm also working on my next YA novel another YA romance novel that is supposed to also pub next year so um there's definitely more coming and you know more after that that I hope to yeah so it's a busy time of the year (laughs) it is definitely (laughs) yeah so all right so let's chat to book recommendations do you have any books to recommend our Mm -hmm. listeners to pick up so I was thinking about this and I think that what who I want to recommend are the two (laughs) meanies this is like falling over my head two of my favorite authors uh one is me grace she uh writes contemporary romance she wrote this book called uh what a match yeah. And um, I really loved that. So I recommend that. And also Mimi Matthews is one of my favorite historical romance authors. Yeah. Uh, I just, I love her um, Orphans of Devon uh, series. I'm screwing up the series name, but those books are good. And I also love um, The Bell of Bell Grace Square, which came out last fall. That was one of my favorite books from last year. So I recommend those two authors in general books but particularly those books well they both are named Mimi I know (laughs) keep it simple you know (laughs) so Christina tell us where you can find you online um I am mostly active on Instagram at Christina Forrest underscore uh, underscore Um, I'm also on Twitter at Christina Forrest um on TikTok at Christina Forrest one I think is my username um and then my website ChristinaForrest.com Thank you, Christina, for being on the show. Thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. For a list of books mentioned and other romance recommendations, please visit whatyourrenextblog.com. Did you know you can purchase audiobooks directly from your favorite local bookstore? With Libro.fm, you can pick up more than 250,000 audiobooks, including bestsellers and recommendations from real booksellers. You'll get the same audiobooks at the same price as the largest audiobook company, you know the name. But you'll be part of a different story, one that supports your local community. 
If you're new to audiobooks, there's a perfect way to squeeze into more reading to your busy life. Listen with the free Libro.fm app while you do your chores, walk your dog, relax at home. The Watch Read Next podcast has a special offer for our listeners. Get two audiobooks on Libro.fm for the price of one with your first month of membership. Use code What to Read Next. This offer is only valid for new members in Canada and the U.S. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.